Hashcat, of course, has uh, much more <coughs> different uh, hashing algorithms available for cracking. So let's just review them. Uh, it's quite large. So uh, there are different options. So we can use uh, we can specify the mode. There are many. Yeah. So there is a reference below, and uh, 1000 I think stands for NTLM. Yeah, I think so. We will check it out. Uh, and there is a tech mode. It's also can be different. We will see the, uh, what are the values. And uh, these are all the different ways you can customize uh, the work of Hashcat. So it's it's highly sophisticated. It uses different approaches. Marker models, for example, is quite a novel approach to password cracking and data analysis uh, in general. So we can do that, uh, we, we can work with it at home, I guess. So please, I encourage you to uh, play around uh, with the Hashcat with different password databases, uh, just because there are different flavors of it, right? You can dump something from a Linux box you have, you can dump something from a Mac OS, you can dump different uh, Windows versions and databases, and just see what happens, okay? so. It's really cool. It gets uh, everything from the hardware components you have in the system. But uh, in the best case scenario, of course, you will still have to rent or create this uh, large multi-core uh, cluster with a lot of uh, disk space for rainbow tables and uh, use that on the night time, <laughs> right? So to do that more effectively, but. Uh, yeah, for now, let's just review the hashing algorithms that are available. Of course, there is uh, SHA-1 as uh, dash M100 and uh, 1000, of course, stands for... Hmm, stands for... I'm almost sure, and yellow, <coughs> of course. So, uh, what are the modes for dash A? It's straight mode, I guess it's just comparing the hashes with the given values. And there are some other ways to optimize that. Uh, we can brute force with a char set, I guess. We can do some hybrid word list combinations with some mangling by masks and so on. So this is uh, quite a lot to play around with uh, and uh, much more than one demonstration could fit. So let's just do that. Yeah, so let's run hash get against our hash values. So for that we will uh, use... Uh, NCLM mode and let's just give it the file and give it the uh, the password list yeah so this of course will be something from secret passwords and I think that RockQ will do okay so RockQ is uh, one of the most comprehensive <clears throat> password collections. This is the leak from Raku.com as far as I remember and it's sorted by popularity so let's use that. So it says that uh, this 1000 mode is not in cache so they are building that. And uh, yeah I think there is a binary for hashing that is cached between hashcat runs so you see it's quite quite cool <laughs> okay what now uh, and it's done <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, password is quite early in the list okay so that's why this hash has been broken like in no time okay so let's do the same for the other hash the SHA1 
SHA, as you see, of course, is not yet in the cache because I run Hashcat for a second time on this machine. So we can see that it is built as well. And after that, and after that, shortly, we will have it started up and nothing really happens. Okay, so yeah. It's uh, it's it says okay, <laughs> that's sh one sha one, but for some reason it doesn't doesn't crack it. The second time, of course, it does it much faster, but I think that's for some uh, specific reasons of sh one hashing algorithm. Most probably there is some salt uh, that. Uh, uh, that uh, hashcat is not aware of. So let's, let's try to do straight attack. No, no luck. Okay, so at least you can see that uh, NCLM is much uh, more simple to crack with hashcat than SHA1. Yeah, so let's let's keep it for a homework. Figure out why SHA1 dumped uh, from uh, Windows 10 is not cracked by hashcat and uh, its algorithms. What is the exact reason? Okay, uh, whatever. We can do that uh, in other way, right? So we can just uh, we can just try to Google this string and most probably we will find it online. Basically, every time you find the hash, the first temptation will be to to run some Google search on it. Yeah, so someone did this exact sequence of actions. We performed to dump it, and they have posted the hashes online. And someone most probably have tipped them off that uh, that's a password. Oh no, that just was another uh, version of Windows, and uh, they have dumped that in clear text as well. So that's why it's indexed. So anyway, it's somewhere there, and you can uh, find it easily by using Google by simply googling the password hash. Okay, so that's it for password cracking for now, I guess. Uh, let's get to other hacking tools.